uh, today we are going to start with the topic that is the IUPAC, right? So first of all, you should know that from where, what is actually this IUPAC and from where it came, right? So you know that many elements are already discovered and uh, still the discoveries, many discoveries are in pipeline, right? So we need uh, this thing, uh, a, a certain, you can say, uh, organization which should specify a name to an element that can be accepted worldwide, right? For example, uh, what, what was happening actually, uh, actually before this IUPAC was uh, you can say launched what was there like some element was uh, you can say was discovered by the Germans right so they named according accordingly and if some element got discovered in the America it named uh, it was named accordingly right but actually we need a name which should be worldwide accepted right and that came from the organization that is IUPAC you know IUPAC is actually an international union of pure and applied chemistry right it is a Geneva system it is a you can say a system system of naming elements which was uh, or you can say given by the system international right so this actually this IUPAC was launched in 1947 and was revised in 1993 like I think you go you are familiar with this abbreviation now it is international union of pure and applied chemistry right so let us see that how it named the element accordingly so according to the IUPAC the name actually consists of three parts or you can say it is divided into the three parts so just look at the board what are those three parts it is the prefix it is the word root the second part and the third part is suffix now you must be anxious to know that what does we what do we mean by this term prefix word root or suffix right so just uh, let me tell you in detail what actually they donate the prefix is indicated by the you can say the substituents which are present in any organic compounds right don't be panic you'll get to know that what are substituents actually so for this movement just uh, you can say you have to uh, uh, you can say uh, grab this that uh, prefix indicates the substituents right we'll be discussing later in detail so three parts are prefix middle one is word root and the third is suffix prefix indicates the substituents which are present in the organic compound now which groups are considered to be substituents we'll be taking later right second word root it actually specifies the number of carbon atom in chain that means the number of carbon atom present in an organic compound right so it's it is specified by the word root right so the third part which is called as suffix suffix you know what is suffix actually it is a ending right it is commonly used in a daily routine as well the suffix means ending right so similarly in this case the end of the name is called as the suffix this suffix is actually divided into two categories one is primary suffix and the other is secondary suffix right so uh, what is the you can say what is the reason behind to divide the suffix into two parts it is the reason is sim so simple that actually the primary suffix indicates the type of bonding present in the organic compound it indicates the type of bonding as we are you are familiar that we have alkanes we have alkenes we have alkynes right so we know that in alkanes there is a single single carbon bond and alkene there is a double bond uh, present and in alkyne there is a triple bond present the number can be one or two it may, varies according to the organic compound but still so uh, what what is the main concern uh, we are here we are just uh, the concern is that that the primary sub primary suffix just indicates the type of bonding that whether it is single bond or double or triple it is the you can say the suffix is used accordingly next is the secondary suffix right secondary suffix actually indicates the functional group if present in a compound right so uh, it just indicates the functional group and I think you are familiar that what is functional group functional group is actually a group of atom which actually determines the properties of the compound if they are present right so similarly the I think you are familiar with the meanings of these three words again I am repeating for you the name is divided into three parts the first part is prefix the middle one is word root it, third is the suffix in the same way we are going to write the uh, name like if you are going to name some kind of organic compound we look for the prefix first we will write at the first letter but like they will uh, or you can say they will form the this first part right then we will count the carbon atoms and it will form the word root and the third part the ending part will consist of that is the suffix indicating the type of bond and if functional group is present then, uh, then also a, a one more suffix is attached to the primary suffix that is the secondary suffix right so this is how 
we are going to name an organic compound right so just let them let us study these substituents number of carbon atoms these primary suffix and secondary suffix in detail so first part the main part what we want uh, when we are writing in iupac we need a word root right so as i told you word root indicates the number of carbon atom in a chain right so what word we are going to use by counting the carbon atoms right so if there is one carbon atom in a chain you are going to indicate by using a word root meth and if it is two then eth three prop four but five Pent, six hex, seven hept, eight oct, nine is non, ten is dec. I'll write the number as well accordingly so that you may not get confused in any case. And they are, these are so simple to remember because the few uh, words you are using already in mathematics as well, right? Like you know that six is hex, right? So similarly, you have uh, different uh, these word roots. So I don't think so that it is difficult to learn. Moreover, you, we have the word root uh, more than ten also. That is eleven is undec, twelve is dodec, thirteen is icosane. It is I C O S A N E, right? I think it's clear. Fourteen is triacotane, like that. It's there is no O. So yeah, there is O T R I A C O T A N E, right? So we have few more, but I think uh, I, according to your standard, you need to remember only till eleven, twelve, because you may not get a question which is which will be beyond uh, twelve carbon atoms, right? So uh, just write in your copies that one indicates the meth. Two carbon atom. If there are two carbon atoms present in a chain, then we use the word root eth. And if there are three, then prop. Four, then but. Five, pent. Six, hex. Pent and hex you already know, right? Seven is hept. Again, you know that you use in uh, mathematics heptagon and like that, right? Eight, oct. Nine, non. Ten is dec, right? And eleven is undec, dodec, icosane, and triacotane. So this is how first the, you can say they form actually the tools of the icosis. Uh, this thing, the IUPAC, right? So you need to be well versed with the word root because if you are not well versed with the word root, you are you may uh, get confused while writing a name. So the first or uh, or you can say the first tool which you have to be well versed is the word root. That is, you should be familiar that how what word you have to use while writing the IUPAC while when you count the Carbon atoms in a chain. Then, what word you are going to specify, which will indicate the number of carbon atom, right? So, this is a very important, right? So, first of all, I think you have written in your copies these word root. So, the, you are familiar with this thing, word root. We have already done. It is so simple. It is just the counting of carbon atom in a chain, and accordingly, then we'll see the number of carbon atom, and accordingly, we'll use that word, right? If I'll, uh, I'll give you a compound, and suppose I'm giving an example. I give you this compound, and I just ask you that how, what word you'll be, what, what will be the word root for this compound? So it is so simple. You just have to count the carbon atoms. See how many carbon atoms? One, two, three, four, and five. Straight away, it will cling to your mind. Five means pent. So obviously, you are going to use the word root as. So this is how you are going to indicate the word root. You just have to count the carbon atoms in a parent chain, and you just have to write it. One more thing, which is very important, we'll be discussing later. But still, I'll give you a hint at this moment. There is not; uh, it is not a compulsion that you have to count all the carbon atoms which are present in an organic compound. Then you are going to name it, right? They are the carbon atoms which specifies the word root. They are only those carbon atoms which are included in a parent chain. Just make a note in your copy. These are the carbon atoms which are present in a parent chain. I'm not talking about the substituent carbons. We are not talking about or any other carbon which is out of the parent chain. It is just concerned with the carbon atoms in a parent chain, right? So you are clear with this word root now. I think it's very easy just to count the carbon atom in a parent chain and accordingly use the word for it, right? So this is the word root. Now. What happens? What is this uh, suffix? Now we'll be studying the suffix. That is the ending. As I told you, that suffix is divided into two categories, right? So first is the primary suffix, which is written prior, and which is followed by a secondary suffix. Primary suffix actually indicates a type of bond, right? Like 
I'll give you an example. We'll be doing the rules as well. But for this moment, to make you more under uh, this thing, uh, understand this concept, I'll give you an example. So see, look at the board. Suppose I give you a compound, right? And you just see that this thing, the only compound which I gave you is this, right? And I ask you that what, what will be the primary suffix for it? So what you will see, you, you must be knowing that primary suffix indicates the type of bond. So what kind of bond do you get to see in this? <laughs> Tell me, what kind of bond? Yes, it is a single bond. See, C, C is a single bond. Here is also a single bond between C and C. And here you get to see again a single bond. So that means the primary suffix will be only for the, it, it, is, it will indicate a single bond only, right? And we know that if for a single bond, what suffix we use? Single bond falls in the category of alkane. Right, and the suffix we use for alkane, you already know, is "-ain". So that is what we are going to use for it. So if I ask you that what is the primary suffix, for example, I gave you, you're just uh, like, uh, in a second you're going to say that yes, because we are uh, able to see only single bond present, so that means the suffix is "-ain". Right, and if there is a minimum one double bond present in a chain, suppose it is like that, so what, uh, to what category it belongs? Obviously, it belongs to an unsaturated category. We know that if there is single bond uh, or all over the molecule, that means it is a member of alkane. But if there is minimum one bond present uh, is double bond, then it uh, do not come under the category of the saturated one. It becomes unsaturated one, right? So for unsaturated, you will get to see if there is a double bond, that means it is a member of alkene. And if there is triple bond, it is a member of alkyne. So what you get to see in this uh, example? Obviously, you get to see all single bonds, but with one double bond. So one double bond means it is now not a member of saturated compound. It is a member of unsaturated compounds. And which unsaturated? Obviously, alkene, because you get to see double bond, right? So we'll be using the suffix accordingly. And we know the suffix for the alkene is ene. So this is what we are going to uh, answer it. And similarly, if I, get, if I just make a bond like triple and I ask you that what is the primary suffix for this example which I stated in front of you. So again, you will be, look, be looking for the bond. You will see a single bond, single bond, but a triple bond. Triple bond means, yes, unsaturated compound. And which unsaturated? Obviously, alkyne. And for alkyne, we use suffix that is ine. So this is how I think it's very simple. It is just to look at the just look at the bonds and accordingly just use the primary suffix as in, in or ein, right? So this is how you are going to indicate the primary suffix. Make one note in your copy. Like for example, if I say there is a bond like this, right? If you if I state an example, C triple bond C, single bond C, triple bond C, right? I ask you primary suffix for it, then what you are going to say? You, you are going, obviously you are going to say that yes, it contains one single bond and it contains two triple bond. So obviously it is not a member of saturated compound. It is a member of unsaturated and which uh, subgroups of unsaturated? Obviously alkyne because you know triple bond corresponds to alkynes. So you will say that yes ma'am it is a member of alkyne, right? So but what suffix will be using in this case? Obviously it is going to be ine, right? But there, there is is a difference like uh, I stated an example before if I if I indicate this uh, compound and I ask you the suffix you will say yes ma'am it, it is going to be ion definitely it is ion for it but for this it is not ion why why is it so do you have any idea yes it is not ion because we get to see triple bond it's okay but we get to see two triple bond and for two triple bond means something else see if i have one marker it means something else if i have two marker then it needs to be specified that i have two marker right so what how you say like if i have one marker so i say i have got a marker right if i have two markers then how i just say it i say i have got two markers you put s along with it which indicates that you have more than one similarly we do in this case we get to see two triple bonds so we need to specify that there are two triple bond present so how we'll be doing that we'll be prefixing die tri tert uh, you can say in front of the prefix like obviously it, the primary suffix is going to be ein it is okay and you know that that it is an ein it falls under the category of unsaturated compound but how many eins two eins so you'll see you'll write it is die ein right and similarly if you get three you are going to write Try ein. 
and if it is 4 you are going to write the uh, time so this is how that means if there is a uh, what i mean uh, after explaining this i want to tell you that if there is a triple bond you need to specify yes the primary suffix is ion right but if there are more than one triple bond present you need to specify that that yes there is more than one triple bond so how you will be doing that by using the prefix di tri tert likewise right so this is this is very important if you won't be uh, writing di try it, your whole question is going to be wrong so you need to specify that yes di tri tert whatever that means the two double bond are present or two triple bond are present is it same happens with the double bond as well so this is what is indicated by the primary primary suffix i hope you have written this di tri tert in your copies as a important note yes it is very important so do not forget it so i think you are clear with the suffix again i am repeating suffix means the ending primary suffix and the secondary suffix primary suffix indicates the type of bond we have three options for that single bond in double bond in triple bond ion right and if you get to see this thing more than one kind of bond we specify that it is dry it is tri it is tert but it happens only in case of alkenes and alkynes not in case of alkenes right like for example if I write this and I ask you for uh, this thing that what is the primary suffix? So you will be writing in. You won't be writing it is tertain, right? Because we don't have to specify because minimum bond present between the atom is a single bond. But after that, if something else is present like double or triple, then you have to specify that it is dry tri or something like that. For case of alkanes, you don't need to mention that it is dry tri or do not uh, indicate the number of uh, single bond, right? So that is only with what uh, what primary suffix we are going to use. We are going to use only in. So this is how uh, we do for primary suffix, and I think it is clear. Similarly, what does Kendry suffix indicate? Now the question comes where we have to use this Kendry suffix and uh, under which situation we don't have to use it, right? So <clears throat> like I gave you this example. So what you get to see here, there are all C and there are all double and different kinds of bond you can say. So in this case or in this case, in both the cases, I must say there is no functional group because you know that that functional groups are indicated by a particular kind of atom or a group of atom. And in these molecules, we don't get to see any other atom other than carbon and hydrogen. So that means there is no secondary suffix present. So it is not compulsory that in an organic compound that secondary suffix is going to be present, right? So if in case you have the secondary suffix or you sorry, if you have any functional group, then attach the secondary suffix with the primary suffix. And if you don't have any uh, functional group, just end the name with primary suffix, right? So we, because I, I want you to understand the secondary suffix, so we are just considering few functional groups and the suffix used uh, for those functional groups accordingly. I have just listed them here. These are not all actually, these are few, right? So the functional groups which can be attached to a chain is alcohol. How we say that it is alcohol when there is an OH group that is hydroxyl group. So what suffix you will be using? You will be using all. I want you to write down the, as I am explaining you turn by turn. So just make a note in your copy, right? So if there is OH group attached to a chain, like I say that there is a C and I get to see this OH. So by looking at this OH, it should strike in your mind that yes, there is a functional group and which functional group? Hydroxyl group indicates the alcoholic group. That means the functional group is alcohol. And what suffix you are going to use? The suffix we are going to use is all, right? And similarly, second functional group is aldehyde. It is not in the order that you have to learn that second is aldehyde because I have summed up in this order then that is why I am telling that one this, two this. You can learn in any case but the only thing that you should be familiar with all functional groups along with their uh, suffix as well. So second means aldehyde. So when you, when you get to know that there is an aldehyde present in a chain, if you see a compound like this, so this means it is an aldehydic group. So that means you will say that functional group present is a aldehyde. So which suffix you are going to use? Obviously it is used as al, al, aldehyde means aldehyde suffix is al. Ketone, it is C double bond O and the suffix is an. Similarly, ester, C double bond, C O O in which there is one uh, double bond with O and one single bond with O, right, like this, right. So it is said to be O8, the suffix uses O8. Acid amide, C-O-N-H-2, acid amide, N-H-2. 
it's right so it is cn co nh2 and the suffix uses a mite i hope you are writing along with uh, as i'm explaining you the next is acid chloride cocl and the suffix uses oil chloride next is amine amine means nh2 right and the suffix is used as same as the functional group that is the amine nitrile it is cn and the suffix uses nitrile so there are so many functional groups which we come across and these are only few don't think like that that these are the only functional groups present there are so many functional groups i have listed few for you so just uh, go through the all the functional groups i am just telling you the method how we do it right so you just need to know the functional group and you know uh, need to know that what are the atom or the group of atom that specify these functional groups and the suffix which are used accordingly right so this is how there we are going to indicate this kinds can be suffix now there is a specific rule as well which we'll be 